Hey everybody, welcome to Tech Uploaded. I'm Chris as always, and today it's fun with cooling. And it's just part one with fun for cooling. There's more to come. But today I'm focusing on cooling my radiator. So I've got the Noctua NF-F12 and the Corsair SP120 fans here. So what am I up to with these? All right, so the NZXT H440 case is kind of getting a reputation for not being the best at cooling, especially with a top mount radiator. And so far I'm finding that to kind of be the case. So I decided to kind of step up from the SP120, which is already a really good fan, to the Noctua NFF12, which is kind of the industry standard when it comes to cooling, especially static pressure cooling on a radiator. And I thought, you know what, if I'm going to go through the trouble of switching out these fans, why not take down some numbers to share with all of you? So here's what I'm going to be doing numbers wise. Okay, so the first thing I did was I decided to, dis to figure out which was better. Push or pull? Well, first off, it was quick to eliminate one of those options for me because I do not want to be pushing air onto the radiator because then it creates dust in the fins and I don't want to deal with that. So I decided I was going to stick with pull, but the question was which kind of pull? Pulling air out of the case with the fans mounted up here, which is how I originally had the build, or pulling air into the case with the fans mounted at the bottom, pulling air through the radiator from the outside. Now, since there's a lot of restriction from the top of this case, because there's only those openings on two sides and there's a lot of foam, I kind of had a sneaking suspicion one would be better than the other. And you'll find out at the end of the video when I post up the numbers. But I took the one that was the best of those two, and that's the one that I'm going to use for the NFF12s when I compare them to the SP120s. So then I decided to take things a step further. And I took the top of the case off and let Prime95 run and stress the CPU just as I did when it, the top was on and see what kind of a difference I got. And I have to say, in certain circumstances, it did make a little bit of a difference. And in some cases, the actual average temperature, it made a fairly big difference. So that being said, it's time to take a look at the numbers and kind of get to the bottom of what's the optimal configuration for the H440 and how much of a hit are you taking for aesthetics? Let's find out. All right, put on your math hat because it's time to do the numbers. Now, I'm gonna move pretty quick, so be paying attention and try not to get a headache. All right, so this is my default configuration. This is how I originally built the system, and this was with the Corsair SP120 fans mounted to the very top of the case, and they were pulling air out. And this was at idle, so you can see the temperatures look pretty darn good. No problems there whatsoever. So what I decided to do then was fire up Prime 95 and wait until the temperatures started kind of leveling out where they seemed to be hitting their max. And as you can see, things got really hot. Now this is on a 4.4 gigahertz overclock on the 4770K. So it is expected for the processor to get a little bit warm, but man, this got really hot. So I decided to switch things up, move the fans to the bottom of the radiator. And this time they were still in pole configuration. So they were actually pulling air in from the outside. And this is how Corsair actually recommends that you mount uh, the H105. So as you can see here, the idle temperatures actually went up a little bit going with this configuration. So then I fired up Prime95, did the same thing, waited for everything to level out, and we got to just about the same place. And as a matter of fact, you can see Core 1 actually did hit its max. So there's a little log indication down there. So Definitely, you know, pretty much the same, pulling a little bit higher temperatures on the idle. So then what I decided to do is pop off the top of the case to allow more air to come in with the fan still mounted on the bottom, pulling air in from the outside. Now, as you can see here, that made a pretty dramatic difference. Temperatures are about 10 degrees cooler and looking at the maximum temperatures, there's still about a four degree difference. So. You know, it, it definitely helped, and on average, it helped quite a bit. So now switching over to the Noctua NFF12. Now looking at these, this is at idle, and they are now mounted to the top, just like the SP120s were on my original build when I first put it together. I wanted to kind of get an idea for what I was going to be getting with both options on this fan configuration as well. And as you can see here, idle temperatures, once again, were nice and cool, no problems whatsoever. So firing things up to load, we still hit the thermal max on the first core, but on average things were staying just a little bit cooler, but it really didn't make that much of a difference. So switching the fans to the bottom, pulling air in from the outside, instead of pulling air from the inside out, you can see here that the idle temperatures again, just like with the SP120s, actually did go up a little bit, not quite as much though, so that was nice. 
Now switching to a full load with Prime 95 once again, waiting for everything to level out to its warmest. Again, hitting the thermal max on that first core, just like before. It really didn't make much of a difference if I was mounted on the top or mounted on the bottom. So pulling air in from the outside or pulling air out from the inside, either way, temperatures under load are pretty much the same, just way too hot. So again, I pulled the cover off, and as you can see this time, taking the cover off actually made a really big difference with the NFF-12s. It kept the temperatures quite a bit cooler, and I actually didn't hit the thermal max on any of the cores and really didn't even come that close on any of them. So that was very surprising and pretty telling at the same time. If you look at where we were at, just to recap again, this is where the temperatures were at with the cover on. So yes, taking the cover off made quite a difference. And clearly this reinforces that the H440 case does restrict airflow quite a bit. Didn't really matter whether I had the fans, again, pulling in from the outside or pulling out from the inside of the case. In both configurations, things got really, really warm with Prime, 9, Prime 95 with the top of the case on. So with Prime 95 out of the way, I decided to move on to things as they would be in the real world. So I fired up the Valley Benchmark and let that run for about 15 minutes to kind of see where the temperatures came on that one. And things are nice and cool. Even with the top of the case on, nothing got even remotely close to being too hot for the 4770K, even with the overclock. So in real world performance, it's not going to get so hot that you're going to have a problem. So yes, the H440 case can be a little bit of a bummer when it comes to cooling, especially with the top mounted radiator. And really you're gonna have the same problem if you mount it on the front because you've got that grill restriction just like you do on the top. And taking a look at Premiere, this actually puts all of the CPUs under a realistic full load, not a Prime 95 load. And you can see here that while the temperatures got quite a bit warmer than they did with Valley, I let this export a video for about 15 minutes and you can see that everything is still well within an acceptable range. We've got you know 28 to 30 degrees, even up to 34 to go before hitting any kind of a, a temperature threshold on the CPU. So in summary, does it matter where you mount the fans? Not really. I just like to keep my fans in a pole configuration so I don't have dust buildup on my radiator, but it doesn't really matter if you put them on the bottom or the top of the radiator. I prefer to keep mine on the top because the Noctua fans are fairly ugly and I don't want to see them. And mounting them on the top keeps them hidden in the H440 case, but I did notice a difference with the Noctua fans because they are PWM, so they really adjust well. They quiet down really fast when the load ends, and they really fire up when the load begins, and that's what you want. And they have so many different adjustments on speed being PWM that they do overall stay quite a bit quieter than even the SP120s did because they're just more efficient at how they handle loads. All right, well, I don't know if that was enough numbers for you, but it certainly was for me. If this video was at all helpful, then please subscribe and be sure to check back soon.